Hello. All right, so real quick, we're going to do the two-sum algorithm, which is what these FANG companies want, like one of the main algorithms they use to test coding competency and programmatic knowledge of kind of, you know, you're trying to get a nice job, you're probably going to know how to do some stuff like this. You're going to have to know how to do some stuff like this. So the reason that this two-sum algorithm is good is because you can refactor it a bunch. There's many different ways to do it. You can use dynamic programming in it. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's pretty good. So we'll go through as though this were a coding interview, right? So I just have a blank, blank uh, VS Code template right here. So I'm going to make a couple of files real quick. So I'll touch sums.js. Uh, you'll see why I'm putting it in capital later. And then runner.js go into VS Code. So now we'll just open this up. The two-sum algorithm basically gives you an array, let's just say one, two, three, four, and five, and it gives you a sum, let's say nine. So the so what it wants you to do is return any two numbers in here that uh, that add up to nine, right? So we can see that four and five add up to nine, so we should return an array of four and five. That's what our array should, that's what our function should return. If there isn't numbers, like if the sum was 99, it should return something, you know, like not found or something like that, right? So um, the first way that we'll do it, we'll do it in uh, brute force, and uh, that'll be an O of n squared time complexity or quadratic time. Uh, this is the wrong way, but it it'll show that you know how to refactor code and stuff. So let's say that I'm given that problem. Hey, we're going to give you an array. We're going to give you a sum to look for you return the two numbers that add up to the sum or you return not found in your function. Okay, so let's make a function. We'll call it two sum. And like we said earlier, it's gonna take in an array and a sum, right? And let's go ahead and define those. So const r is gonna equal an array with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then const sum is gonna equal, what's nine and eight? 17, let's just say 17. Okay, so what we wanna do in this brute force approach, you might think, well, how could I solve this? Basically, I could have like an, an I here and a J here, and I can say, is one plus two equal to 17, which is what we're looking for? No, it's not, I'll increment J. One plus three, no. One plus four, no. One plus five, no. One plus six, no. One plus seven, no. One plus eight, no. One plus nine, no. I'll increment I to here. So two plus three, no. Increment j, 2 plus 4, no. 2 plus 5, no. 2 plus 6, no. 2 plus 7. So you can see it's a lot of calculations. And if the answer we're looking for is here, and the array that we're sifting through is like, you know, 500 characters, 500,000 characters long, this is the incorrect way to solve it, but it still will work. Um, one telltale sign that you're using uh, wrong think in programming, for the most part, is when you have nested for loops. That's a big no-no. I cannot friggin' type. All right, so to get this kind of functionality, we would have to use nested for loops. So let's go let i equals zero, i less than r dot length, i plus plus. And then within that, we'll get our j. So for let j equals zero, j less than r dot length, j plus plus. Actually, we don't want to start j at zero. We want to start j one increment more than one. So we'll just put it at one. So that should work just the same. So i will start here at one. j will start here. Then j will increment. Then once it gets to the end, i will increment to here. And then j will go here. Right? OK, so that's the way that our algorithm is going to run. Uh, and we'll go if r at i, this is what we're checking for, if r at i plus r at j, if that ever equals the sum that's passed in, then what we want to do is just return an array with r at i and r at j as the elements within it. If that doesn't happen, we want to return something like not found. Okay? So what we can do as a teaching tool is right here at the top, we can go let count. You don't have to do this but I'm gonna do it, let count equal zero, and then each time we run through this for loop, we'll just go count plus plus, uh, so we can see how many times, uh, if it doesn't return, 
we can see how many times count has been incremented, how many cal calculations have happened. So CLG count right down here. Okay, so let's run through this. We're, we're going through, we're looking for 17. Let's see if it finds it. So we'll go node uh, sums.js. And it didn't find it because we didn't call the function. So let's CLG to sum with the R and sum passed in. And let's run it again. So we get 8 and 9, which is 17. Um, so now let's see when it doesn't work. Like 177 will not be found in this. So let's see how many calculations it does to show that it doesn't work. So it did 72 calculations on a 9 number array to find that the 177 wasn't in there. So that's the most amount of calculations it will do just to give you a negative response. So that that's a lot of calculations. It's pretty expensive because we only got nine elements in here. Imagine if you had you know 250,000 or a million or something like that. So what you want to do is you want now we want to write it in not the brute force way. We want to refactor to where we can get a linear time or an O of n time complexity. What O of n means is that the total number of calculations to get a negative value, to get a negative uh, response like return not found, will only be the amount of, uh, it will be directly proportional to the amount of elements within the given array. So O of n, whereas n is the length of the array. The length of the array here is nine, there's nine elements in it. So this function that we're about to write at most should do nine calculations and that's it. It will never do more than that. That's what we're shooting for. So let's go to sum right here. And this is the this is the uh, linear time, or not linear time, the right way to do it. And O of n is linear time. Okay, so here we go. To sum equals, and let's get rid of this stuff. To sum, it's going to take in, again, it's going to take in an array and a sum. And this is, you know, this is basically dynamic programming. We're going to break this into smaller parts to solve a larger problem. Up here, since we're constantly doing a comparison between two indexes, we're doing it R at I and J and R at J. Well, right here, what we could do is let's go const uh, result or const pass number. Let's call that pass numbers equals an empty array. Then we do our for loop. So for let i equals zero, i less than r dot length, i plus plus. Let's do it like that. And then in here, let's go let current equal r and i. That'll be the current number we're incrementing through. And let's let needed number equal sum minus r and i. And let me explain what this is. So let's say that we're, our current number is 3, and we're looking, our sum that we're looking for is 17, and the current number we're on is 3. 17 minus 3 is 14. So we can check this pass numbers array and see if 14 is in here. If it is not, we can pass this 3 in and then check it later. If we run across a 14, it'll find this 3 in there, and then you can, you can return those. So the way that we write that, we'll say if not needed or pass numbers dot includes needed number. If it doesn't include it, then we're gonna pass into it. So pass numbers dot push current. We'll push the current in. If it is there, so this will be the else statement, we'll just return an array with needed number and current. And if that doesn't work, we'll just return not found. So let's run this and let's see if it works. We have the same, uh, we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to comment this out because the, uh, the functions are named the same. So we'll move this down here. Okay, so let's run it again. Let's go to node, see if it works. And it gives us eight and nine, which is it, which is what we wanted. Now let's give it. Let's do that same thing we did in the first one, where we put a count in here. So let count equal zero, and then each time it runs through this, we're going to want to increment count by one. And then here, if it doesn't find it, we'll just console log count, and we'll see how many counts we get to get something to get a no answer in here. One seventy seven will not be in here. So let's see how many calculations it does. See right here to get this not found here, it only did nine calculations, which is 
n, so O of n, it ran n calculations. That's as many as it's going to run, even if it fails, even if it finds a, a, even if it returns a not found, it's only going to run those. So this is the proper way to do it. This is the right, uh, this is the right solution. You can talk about the dynamic programming that you did while bringing in a, another array and checking those pass arrays. You can talk about the time complexity of it and blah, 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 blah. So now another good thing to do would be, well, what if they say something like, well, we want this to be like some modular, modular code that you can pass around and we want to be able to export this to another file and run it, which is, you know, what you do in the real world. So here we can just do a class. So let's put it in a class. So a function that's globally scoped is just a function, but as soon as you attach that function to a class, it becomes a method. So this sum will become a class method for, let's make a class called, I don't know, sums, because that's what we named it up top. Uh, class sums, and let's put this method now, this former function, now method, in the class, and we can take off this const keyword up front because on uh, class-based methods, you don't, you don't need that. Uh, but what a class does need every time is a constructor function. So we'll go constructor, and here we're not we're not we're not doing anything with it. So we're just making it. You have to have this line. Usually, this is where you would add in arguments that when you're creating an instance. So let's say that I was making a node class or something, and each node had a bit of data. You would pass in the data in the constructor. So like data, and then you would go this dot data equals data that's passed in. That's, that's for another video, a class-based video, but just know that you have to have this constructor keyword right here. So let's say that I wanted to export this, uh, this class, which contains the two-sum method on it. So I could go, this is common JS. This isn't the ES6 syntax, like you would use the, the, the export statements that you would use in React or some newer front-end framework that has Webpack and Babel implemented in it. This is just common JS. This is more like you would find in Node, for example. So you can just go module.exports equals sums because that's our class. So now that we're exporting that, we go to another uh, file here and we can just go const, we'll import it. So const sums equals require, this is how you import, dot slash sums. So that's our relative path to it and that's what we put in quotes right here. So now we have access to it on this variable called sums. So we can go const sum equals new sums invoked. So now we should have access to that two sum method that we wrote. So we could just console log right here, sum dot two sums with the, uh, do we have the array? Yeah. Oh, I erased it. Okay. But over here, you could just make a new array. Which do we put in first, the array or the sum array? So we can go const array equals same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Const sum equals, well, we don't want to call it sum. We'll call it number equals. We won't want to call it sum because we call our instance of the sum class sum. So we don't want to have naming conflicts. So the number that we're looking for, we'll just call it uh, number <laughs> we are looking Four. That's a really bad way to name that. Never do that. Uh, let's just do it eight and nine again. So that's 17. So right here we'll put, I don't want to name it number we're looking for. That's just too long. We'll just put number. Let's put num. Uh, so, but I want you to understand that I, you can call it anything that you want. The only reason I'm not calling it sum is because I call this instance of the sum class sum. So we don't want to, we don't want to run into each other with naming conflicts. So in our method, you can see that we bring in the array first and then the sum second. So we'll just go right here. We'll just go r and num. And we're running this sum dot two string. Sum is an instance of the sum cl sums class. So let's see if this will work. Uh, we're, this time we're running runner.js, so node runner. And it gives us eight and nine. Cool. So it gives us the same thing. So let's try 175. This should return not found. And it, it's still returning this nine because right here we have this count. Uh, let's take this out because we were just doing that to show. So let's take this out. Let's run it again. And it show, and it gives not found. So what we've done here is we've refactored a, uh, an, a function uh, two different ways, uh, O of N or quadratic time, and then o, or o of N squared, which is quadratic time, which is the wrong way, which is this, and then O of N time or linear time here in this. Then we put it within a class called sums and we exported that class to a runner file that this is where we actually had access to those. We had to create a new instance of the sums class called sum and then on that sum 
uh, instance, we ran the method to sum. See, if we try to just do to sum like this, we would get this error. See, console.log to sum r to sum is not defined because it's looking for to sum like it was right here, like like const to sum. That's what it's looking for. So you have to let it know where it is. So it's on the sum instance that we created right here. Okay, cool. So that's all pretty good. And Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury are about to fight, so I'm going to go watch that. Y'all take it easy.